What is up, friends? Uh, I was in a blues jam, and I was sort of just comping behind uh, one of one of the guys who was taking a solo, and um, it was doing something. It became a little bit of a topic of conversation, so I just wanted to show you this cool trick if, if this isn't something that you guys are using um, as it is, but basically when we we're taking we're taking the fifth out of these chords now okay for you guys that know the 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 theory um behind chord structure so if we're in a blues which is what we were in in, in the last time i got my root note right my fifth fret on the on the e string nothing on the a right so that's just kind of blocked out then my flat seven which is my fifth fret on my d string and then the sixth fret which is the major third right on the sixth fret on the g that's my A7 now, right? And you can see those are right out of this chord, right? So that's what I'm doing. That's it, right? That tends to sort of get out of the way and not cover so much ground. It has a little bit of a darker feel to it, right? Than, than just playing like a full, um, you know, the, the full chord, even even up to, uh, up to the root note or however you would normally play it. You just want to like kind of cover a little bit less ground here. Um, and this goes for the vibe, you know, of, of the tune, of course. So that was my, my A7. Now, when I go to the four chord, this becomes my D. So it's just root note, right? Fifth fret on the, on the A string. My third, which is the fourth fret in the D. And then my fifth fret on the G is my flat seven. Now, this is also, when I move this up from a D to an E, that's also my five. So I've got my one, A7 my four, my D7, and then my five, my E7 right up here. And what I was doing at first, there were, there were two, two nice little moves here that, that were happening, but I would have my A, and I'd sort of go to this sharp four, and then down, uh, to the, so the D sharp to the D. And what's really happening there that, that's pretty interesting, I think, uh, is that I have my flat seven and my third of my A, and that actually becomes the uh, third and flat seven of this D sharp that now goes down to the D, right? So there's a little bit of like like suspended um, suspended uh, chord tones, you know, same and then down, right? It creates a little bit of, of movement. I usually do that on, on the four or the end of four, depending on what the groove is. Now you can do the same thing. We're gonna to go to an A flat, which has this same tritone back up to the A. Right, so now this is what we sort of have here. We've got and then back to my four, sharp four down to the four. And then the sharp four, or the flat five, however you wanna look at it, into my E. Right, and just kind of like mixing it up a little bit. It's a cool way to kind of kind of get through the blues. Obviously, that has a very different feel than a, you know, that kind of a blues shuffle thing. What we were also getting into because we sort of took the fifth out. Um, the bass player, you know, is is covering that fifth a good amount. You know, bass player is also covering that um, root note a good amount. So we can now take this and just play the tritones of of uh, of the progression and it's still going to sound like a 12 bar blues so what i'm going to do is that's my a7 tritone my four chord tritone my one chord tritone my five to four and then back to the one so it's the same thing. I'm just following that tritone, right, all around. Um, that that comes out really cool. I want the 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 one uh, kind of like I don't know, expounding on that a little bit or or, or getting a little bit more into it is it works. It, it, it does tend to work with something that's that can be a little bit more rhythmic and maybe like a little bit more funk based in a 12 bar or even if you just have have like um, a dominant seven like one to four progression or however you're looking at it but we, we can do the same thing up here if we sort of have this a7 right we have this form of an a7 too if you're sort of getting a little bit higher in in comping and that that i like to to kind of explore up here a little bit more if it's got a little bit more of that 
right? Now, this is gonna be the same thing. There's my A7, right? And that's still my one, five, flat seven, and three, if you guys can sort of see. It's just this, the D7, uh, the D7 uh, position moved up, right, to fit where my A7 would go, right? If you sort of think of like that, that's your D7, that's your root note is the open D, right? So now, if you just get that open D as you're sliding up, wherever that first finger sort of is to cover that open, there's my A, boom, I got my A7. Now, I got A7, and then I can go to my D7, my four chord, right? If you guys can sort of see, it's just like that bar chord, it'd be like if you did a D7 like this, right? I'm just covering that, which means my E7 is now up here. And now, this sounds really cool, high up here. And I'm just taking the bottom three strings, to be honest. Now, with that progression, that being said, we could take, again, just the tritone. Now, this, depending on where you want to fit sonically in, in, uh, in, the, in the comping thing, that's why I think this works a little bit better rhythmically. Uh, this works a little bit cooler. Right, a little bit more legato, right? Still still has that rhythmic feel, but a little bit more legato kind of kind of like holds the bottom end a little bit more. But now the same thing, we take this tritone. There's my tritone of my A. So that just means bring it down one fret. Tritone from my D7. Back to my one. I'm avoiding the root note and the five this whole time. Letting the bass and like the organ, if there is one, another rhythm guitarist, kind of take take those the, those segments. So, uh, just a cool way, you know, when we sort of get into a little bit more rhythm and a little bit more comping, um, it is very important to see where you're going to fit in in all of that, um, and sort of coming out if you if you have an organ you know, uh, and, and sort of just coming right out with that. And covering that much ground and, and, and that much extension without, without you know, a nice syncopated rhythm and, and kind of breaks, it definitely starts to, to step uh, on and there, there kind of ends up being a little bit too much like sonic traffic. Um, you know, so like really, really figuring out, all right, am I going to, am I going to sort of jump up or, you know, where's the, where's the bass player and, and the other rhythm instruments, whether it's another guitar or whatever, where are they sitting and how can I fill in some of the gaps that are, are where, where they're sitting. Um, and then, uh, and then kind of moving along from there. The one thing that I will say, I'm just going to throw this at the end of the video. It wasn't going to be a part of it, but I just re uh, remember learning when I was in Berkeley, um, I had a guitar teacher that was very, very, very adamant about this is if you're doing a little bit more of that, that, that sort of funk and syncopated thing, do not step on the hi-hat, right? If that drummer's got, that drummer's going to be rocking that hi-hat, you know, whatever the rhythm is. So you want to make sure you're fitting in, right? Where it starts to get to be a little bit of trouble is is when we start getting into that funk rhythm what we do is a lot of times as guitar players is sort of keep it going right and that's just you're stepping all over the hi-hat and you're not you're not giving that hi-hat um which is such a crucial part of funk you're not giving that hi-hat um the 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 room uh, that it needs and you're gonna be sort of like stepping on it. So it's definitely like, it, you know, figuring out, getting into jam sessions, figuring out where you, where you sit is really, really important. But that's just, you know, a few ideas of how to make um, blues comping a little bit, um, a little bit more pleasing. Uh, when we when we talk about blues, comping isn't always where we, we go. You know, ry rhythm guitar and comping, it's sort of, we, we go to lead and then we sort of just fall into the, you know, that the shuffle trap. Not that not that it's a trap. I'm just saying, like, that isn't always where the blues uh, lies. You know what I mean? There's plenty more to it. Um, and especially once we get a little bit more R&B and a little bit more funk involved in, in, in it, too. But some ideas, you know, for you blues players. Um, thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.